Okay, a uh, fabulous evening to everyone. I extend a warm welcome to all of you to Margadarshi, the Edu Series 2022, organized by Trisha Classes in association with Digiwell. Uh, I extend a warm welcome to you for the 11th episode today. Uh, it's been a series of events which is happening from almost since March 2022. Uh, with the aim of providing uh, various educational inputs to the students and primarily uh, second pu and the degree students who are watching us as an attempt uh, to solve the problems uh, what they face in uh, the regular selection of courses basically i'm talking about the career guidance and the career planning program so today's uh, topic or the theme uh, is very much uh, required and very much need of the hour i feel is classroom to boardroom Uh, how ready you are I and mean, how ready are you basically like in the sense you know uh, today what we find as a teachers or educational institution basically is that the a great amount of gap that exists between academics and corporate at the same time the students find it really difficult to sail through the corporate life so i think uh, we have the right person for today who could share her corporate experience as well and she also equally had a great academic journey i take this immense opportunity to introduce uh, ms shambhavi bandarkar the ceo of uh, chipsy it services Uh, for this episode on behalf of all my students and viewers i extend a warm welcome to you ma'am namaste everyone yes it gives me immense pleasure to be here today mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much uh, digi world tv trisha and uh, mr guru prasad rao for having me here thank and you i'm Good. looking forward to sharing my experience today great pleasure is ours so ma'am uh, we have coined this as a classroom to boardroom mm -hmm. uh definitely i would start from the classroom uh, and you also had uh, an amazing academic journey can you yeah. throw some light on your academic journey please yeah um initially uh, primary school it was like uh, different places for me because my dad was in a transferable job mm -hmm. so uh, it was belgaum then udp then bit of uh, schooling in delhi but a uh, major part of my schooling was uh, luckily at a uh, educational city like udp so from 6th onwards still my mba i've studied at udp mm -hmm. uh 10th standard uh, i was a top for nutrition high school uh, that okay. was like a foundation for me to you know achieve more and more success in my academic uh, life Wonderful. so yeah um, eventually i did my bbm i got a third rank in uh, mangalore university wow. uh, bbm i pursued from upendra pay memorial college mm -hmm. and uh, post that i did my mba from uh, mim Manipal Institute of Management out there as well I was a topper in all four semester and a gold medalist fantastic <laughs> yeah so i was kind of highly disciplined as a student and uh, i had that aim to achieve in life mm -hmm. that you know i have to be a topper and i was kind of ambitious throughout lovely <laughs> some good things that you could recollect from your academic journey some memories that you could share to us yeah i was uh, like always as i mentioned very well planned student mm -hmm. i used to have those time table like you know one day i have to study accountancy and the next day statistics and i used to ritually religiously follow those time table Lovely. without fail and i was that um, kind of dedicated towards my studies and mm. that was out of interest like no one forced me like my parents never said you have to study so much you have to become so and so it was all within me i don't know how i got that but it was there like you know i have to study well it was out of my own interest that was really great because uh, we come across a lot of students who are really good in uh, planning Yes. But when it comes to execution, yes. there lies a real challenge. Like Absolutely. What made you push up all the time, and what motivated you to take it up uh, your plan so seriously? Self motivation. Self motivation. I'm, I was always a self motivated person. Till date, I am one. Um, I never wanted any external motivation per se. I've always believed that if I have that aim, if I have that goal, I want to achieve it. Come mm -hmm. what may. and when the vision is clear there is nothing like it you can face any kind of challenge they awesome. say right where there's a will there is a way absolutely that's always work for me i think point well taken uh, students uh, you know this is what you need to uh, uh, keep striving upon you know right self motivation is nothing to beat i mean this absolutely. is unbelievable that's what keeps you uh, uh, pushing you to uh, climb further the ladder absolutely great. like uh, what challenges you face i mean you had a great journey you've been yes. a rank holder you've been a topper i'm sure but the journey was not so simple yes you had lot of challenges lot of challenges uh, be it uh, as a student be it in the corporate uh, world as well i mm -hmm. faced lot of challenges like in terms of uh, studies there have been cases where i have got really nervous on the day of exams mm -hmm. i've kind of cried that you know i don't remember anything my mind has gone blank completely uh -huh. and literally i was like crying throughout the day but then i performed well in the exams and i scored well <laughs> wow. because uh, i think because as i mentioned i was so well planned i used to study regularly so i didn't keep anything for the last minute okay. but then last minute i used to sometimes go blank but mm -hmm. then uh, i somehow managed it well 
And if you ask in the corporate world, again, uh, it's been a mix of good and bad. Uh, like good because uh, since I mentioned I was highly disciplined as a student, it continued in my corporate journey as well. Absolutely. So it was kind of well planned. I used to execute things. I used to have my to-do list every day and right. manage my things really well. And uh, that was like a plus point for me because um, that student life continued. The classroom to boardroom journey continued in a right. very seamless way. Right. Uh, in terms of challenges in corporate world, I would say like uh, every organization that I work for, fortunately or unfortunately, I, I was always the first person to learn a process. That process was pretty new. Mm -hmm. So learning it from scratch, ensuring that I deliver things well, streamline that process was always a challenge for me. But it was really good. I got to learn a lot in this journey of uh, 19 plus years of my corporate life. And uh, I owe it to my seniors because they trusted me so much that I could carry out a new process like from scratch. No one to help me out. Like mm -hmm. if, if, you, if, if it's a process which has been transitioned from someone, it's always like you have someone to you know, ask for help. But when it's a new process, it's everything on me right so that was a challenge but I somehow managed it well and um, yeah it um, it was always like my seniors were helpful my co-workers my peers my juniors all of them have supported me throughout this journey Great. I'm thankful to them fantastic I mean it's almost uh, you're touching up to two decades of your corporate journey that's right yes Do you recollect your transition process on the first time after completing your MBA from MIM and you moving out for the job for the very first time mm -hmm. what was the initial challenges or what was the mindset when you went there how well, different Shambhavi <laughs> was in the classroom and was in the boardroom? Okay, um, see when I was pursuing my MBA, I had this um, goal that uh, those days Infosys was like one of the best firms to okay. work for. Mm -hmm. And I had this um, dream role like, you know, I should join Infi mm -hmm. and uh, work in that company. And luckily, I kind of pursued through that uh, goal and you know, I connected with several people. I started sending my resume to them. I went through the careers uh, portal, started applying. And somewhere, uh, somebody you know, re received my resume and he helped me out and mm -hmm. I got placed. My first job was at Infosys Mangalore, mm -hmm. which is like a dream come true for me. And um, it was such a wonderful campus. I was like I so impressed. It was Kotara Choki, Kotara, uh, yeah, yeah, Kotara Choki, and uh, it was pretty good um, because it was a software firm to start off, and mm -hmm. software firm believes in like flexi shift, and it's like cool environment, right. not really kind of you know highly pressurized kind of an environment. I so mm -hmm. I, I was lucky. I was fortunate that I started off there, and uh, it was a good thing, you know, to learn about the corporate world. Um, they, like there were a lot of supportive folks around and uh, I gelled well with most of the people. Most of them were software engineers and I got to learn a lot. Great. So it was good. Classroom to boardroom journey. Nothing to worry. I mean, uh, today a, a corporate demands a holistic development from the student. Mm -hmm. The regular complaint what we had from the corporate mm -hmm. is that uh, you send us the raw material. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like we do not want the raw material. We yes. want the finished products coming up to the, uh, you know, uh, the corporate world. Mm -hmm. So, any suggestions for the educational institute, like how they can convert this raw material into a finished product? Yeah, absolutely. I've seen lot many freshers joining companies mm -hmm. and you know, um, not knowing to write a simple email. Right. So, I'm thinking, where are these educational institutes going wrong? Absolutely. Why are they not teaching them to write a basic email to a client, right? right? And there have been many cases where there have been goof ups where they send just shoot out an email to the wrong client, client information gets leaked out. Again, the confidentiality is at risk, reputation is at risk of the company. So these things is where, you know, the educational institutes are not training the students to face. Right. And even basic like using MS package, like knowing MS Excel, that's very, very important. Like, you know, Google Sheets or MS Excel. No one knows that. No one knows the shortcut keys. After they join the organization, they start learning. I'm like, why can't the educational institute start teaching them prior hand? Get them prepared well in advance. True. Maybe have a compulsory internship program for six months. Every Absolutely. educational institute should have that. Absolutely. Uh, get industry experts to deliver lectures mm -hmm. because that's when you know there is the, the, the bridge can be gapped between what's the reality of corporate world and what's happening in the classrooms. Absolutely. So this is very much required in today's world. I feel there's a lot of gap there. Great. Uh, you're pointing out that uh, I think education institute should get out of just the textbooks, yes. just the syllabus. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Uh, some skill sets what the student should possess before they get into the corporate? Yeah, communication skills, Great. very, very important mm -hmm. because uh, to achieve anything in the corporate world, communication is a must. 
I see that okay. uh, folks from UDP side, they're pretty shy, they're hesitant to talk. But that's really wrong. You should be really open to talk. Even it's I was like that. completely opposite of their marks that they score. <laughs> Absolutely. True. So it's like I was also an introvert. But when I joined the corporate world, I understood. I learned it my way. Like, you know, I should talk. I mm. should talk and ask questions, seek for help. Network with people around, right? That's when you kind of find the right solutions in the corporate world. Otherwise, it becomes really difficult. So, com communication skill is one of the major skills any student should possess, and they should start practicing themselves prior hand, right? And also behavioral skills, like okay. how they should behave. Okay. Like that's very very important, and most of the performance appraisals in uh, MNCs have that as a criteria, right? Behavioral aspects. They might be excellent with work, but then if their attitude sucks, like you know, they are not very good with their bosses or the, with the co-workers. They kind of adamant. They are arrogant. Mm -hmm. So such cases, they will score badly in the performance appraisal. So they should okay. know how to behave, how to be polite, how to be nice to people around. The more they nice, I think they are going to get more help in return. Great. Yes. And. Uh, the students these days also lack consistency you know, in mm. whatever they take up. Uh, they don't dream big. True. Plus, sustainability is always a key issue. Like, uh, yes. What do you suggest for those students like who don't find adjustment happening uh, very quickly with them? Yeah, I've seen that, uh, especially with the youngsters these right. days. They keep switching their jobs. Right. Every six months, they'll move, they'll jump into a new job. Mm -hmm. And when I check, when I've spoken with them, it's mo major of majority of them kind of are concerned with salary. So they are kind mm. of so money minded, they just are not exactly. bothered about learning things, Correct. achieving things within an organization, growing within the organization. They are just not bothered about that. They just care about, all they care about is a good pay. So just for like, you know, a little bit of hike, they'll keep switching their job every six months. I keep telling them how bad your resume is going to look like, like five years down the line. If you right. don't stick around in a company, at least for two years, minimum of two years, your resume is going to really look bad. So never do that. At least the first job that you take up, at least you should stick around for at least two years there. And that's when your resume is going to look very impressive. Learn things in an organization. Be there. Be loyal to the company. Learn things and grow within the organization. There's nothing like it. Absolutely. The other topic that I always like to discuss with experts, uh, especially people when I meet like you, mm -hmm. uh, the education institutes uh, somewhere also fails to teach them success management versus failure management. Yes. I feel today both are necessary. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Could you share some of your experience? How have you managed your success? At the same time, how have you managed your failures? Because life is all about ups yeah, and downs, I'm sure. Absolutely. You uh, have gone a lot to that. Yeah, yeah. Ups and downs is going to be there everywhere, be mm -hmm. it corporate or uh, world. Life itself is filled with ups and downs. Uh, so, what, how I managed is like whenever there's downs, right, I kept myself confident that things will change. Mm -hmm. Never be so depressed that, you know, things won't change. Time keeps changing, right? So you have to have that positive mindset. Okay, this is just a phase. It will eventually go through and you'll pass through that phase and you, you will eventually come out successful because right. these challenges help you to actually face the world in a better way. You become stronger as a person, right? right? So, um, and when it's in, in case of ups, like mm -hmm. whenever I've got a promotion, where whenever I have grown up the ladder, mm -hmm. I've kept myself grounded. I've always been humble. I've believed in humility Fantastic. because, uh, yeah, uh, because I don't believe that, you know, um, titles define a person or anything. His attitude defines him, right? So Fantastic. you have to be kind to everyone, be nice to everyone. That's what I keep telling everyone um, as in when I meet people. Um, I'm always a grounded person. I've never kind of uh, behaved uh, in an arrogant way with anyone in my ever in my corporate life or be elsewhere as well. Fantastic. I mean, that's part of the people management skills as yes, well. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, I would just like to remind my students and viewers that this is a live phone-in program. So our uh, phone numbers are being displayed on the screen. Feel free to call us and uh, reach out for any clarifications that you have from uh, the speaker. Well, uh, Shambhavi, uh, the freshers when they get into the corporate world, what should be their initial focus? Initial focus, um, suppose they have got into an organization. Mm -hmm. They have to first understand the culture of the organization. Like what are the timings, okay. right? Who are their um, uh, like seniors? Mm -hmm. Who are their co-workers? Mm -hmm. What kind of setup is that? Like, you know, what is the department? What all, all about, right? They should understand that prior hand. Mm -hmm. So the more the homework they do, they are better to face that kind of organization, right? True. And uh, tackle any kind of issues. So first, understanding the culture of the organization is very, very important. So I would say like first one week, give yourself time, talk to people around, understand the culture of the organization and be like one of them, right? 
So that's the initial phase. Eventually, once you get into the organization, once you get adjusted, it's all about learning. You should learn new things. Whatever you have been assigned, uh, ensure that you learn every day. I'm still learning. Every day is a learning process. I've always yes. believed in mm -hmm. that, right? So you should be open to learning things from anyone. It could be your juniors as well. It could be any person around you. So just talk, communicate with them, understand what are the various processes, what do they do. It could be even simplest of uh, person in the junior level as well. You have a lot of things to learn every from every individual, Great. right? And um, you should be open for change as well like uh, today you are doing some process tomorrow you are said like you are told that you have to change the, move to another department or you know you have to take up a new process be open to all such things Great. in terms of not just process in terms of um, geographical locations as well mm. when you are young you can you are uh, more flexible to move around right i, know, I think uh -huh. the biggest weakness is that they're not adaptable and flexible actually yes most of them. yes no, why they can't uh, receive those and accept those changes? Yes, that's why uh, they should be actually. And d during their young, younger days, they mm. should be even more open to accept such things and be more adaptable. I don't know sure. why they are not, sure. but I keep advising all the youngsters. They have to be like that and they should be uh, easily mm. uh, you know, adaptable to any kind of things that's thrown to them. Right? Lovely. Uh, Shambhavi, you would agree to me, a lot of them uh, on the verge of getting the jobs, mm -hmm. uh, they end up in a place where there is absolutely no connection to the education qualification. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know, uh, can yes. I call it as professional blunder? Absolutely. Um, that's uh, just why. Just to give that's you an example, like, yeah. uh, just a vague example, you know, mm -hmm. uh, somebody taking up uh, civil engineering, getting into, uh, uh, you know, the management domain or the finance domain yeah. or other way around. Yes. Uh, what I've do you want to say of the, those? I mean, these mm. numbers are getting increased these days. Yes, I've seen that a lot these days. Um, that's because they lack vision. Uh, maybe they're not understanding where they should get into. If your vision is clear, like what I want to achieve, which is the field that I want to get into, mm -hmm. then these things would never happen, right? Um, they wouldn't get into a wrong um, educational institute itself. Why, do, why to take up such a course when you're not interested? True. Take up something which you're passionate about. Understand your own skill sets. Like, what are you interested in? And I think um, this you understand during your initial phase itself. Maybe 10th, 12th, you get to know what are you interested right. in. Right? So that's when you actually take up something which interests you more and more. And that's what happened with me. Commerce was something which interested me. And that's why I took up, I moved from, like, I had taken up science in my PU. Then I thought science is not my cup of tea. I moved uh, into BBM, which is, like, management. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And... Uh, in MBA, I took up international finance as my specialization and I knew I want a career in finance because yeah. that interests me. Mm -hmm. I was pretty clear about that. So I didn't take up anything else apart from finance and financial management and luckily I got opportunities in that arena and I've been successful out there. Uh, I was asking you if you recollect uh, the uh, differences of choices they make once they get into the, uh, you know, the corporate world and the uh, their education which never matches. Mm -hmm. So what are the prerequisites they should do it before? I mean, probably uh, I feel the reason is that they, they don't wait. Mm -hmm. They don't wait. Uh, they do not have the patience. Mm -hmm. How can you overcome that? Well, um, I would say they should be uh, prepared to f get into a particular industry, right? In particular sector, right? Whatever interests them. Now they have pursued an engineering course and now they want to get into a banking industry, for sure. example. So they should take up, say, short-term courses to understand things better in terms of what is banking and what are the things that's in, on offer in the banking sector so that they can face any kind of challenges in terms of learning once they get into that sector, right? So take up short-term courses, take up some certification course. So these things will actually help them gain knowledge about that particular sector which they are uh, now trying to pursue. Mm -hmm. But it's always advisable to put whatever you've learned to practice. So get into an industry, whatever you have studied, otherwise everything is going to go uh, waste. There's no point jumping, uh, yes. you know, when it is not your cup of tea. Absolutely, well, yes. The biggest, uh, 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 okay, I think we have a call. Uh, let's take it. Sure. Yeah. Hello? 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 Yeah, good evening. Uh, welcome to Margadarshi. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, I have one uh, doubt uh, regarding my higher education and all that. Just now I have completed uh, my engineering course. Okay. And, hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, please go on, go on. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 is there any opportunity, if I do a MBA course there, uh, is there any uh, good, good opportunity in the modern narrative? Okay, currently you are doing your engineering? 
Yeah, I just now I completed my engineering. Sir. Which specialization? Uh, yeah, specialization. Yeah. Which no, branch? Which branch? I'm uh, mechanical engineering. Okay. Okay. So I got your question. Uh, okay. You are a currently an uh, uh, engineering student. You have completed engineering. You want to join an MBA and you want to know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. Thanks for the call. Uh, I would place this question to the speaker. Uh, do watch for her answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't get his name. Uh, Danush, but, I believe. Okay, Danush. Um, what I would like to say is um, there is a major switch from mechanical engineering to MBA. MBA is all about uh, management, right? So I don't know why do you want to change your um, educational, um, you know, um, line from engineering to MBA. I would never suggest that for anyone. Though I had a lot of classmates as well mm -hmm. who were uh, engineers and who were pursuing MBA with me. Mm -hmm. But then when they ended up uh, pursuing a career, they got back to the engineering line itself. Okay. They are all into software or some engineering. Uh, kind of a firm so I would strongly advise you to um, stop with the engineering degree and get into a kind of a company more into like a mechanical sector like you know maybe infrastructure firms there's a lot of opportunities out there mm -hmm. right you should get into such kind of sector and start working rather than getting into an MBA and changing your line completely okay right mm -hmm. that's all your four years of your engineering degree is going to be waste otherwise or do you even recommend any uh, post graduation courses in the field of engineering itself? Yeah, you could do M Tech probably. M -tech, yeah, M Tech right. is advisable than MBA mm -hmm. or probably MCA. Okay. Yeah, so that's more aligned to you know engineering course than MBA. MBA is totally different, right? Uh -huh. So Danush, uh, thanks for the call. By the way, uh, well, uh, what we would suggest to you, as per the speaker's advice, is that if you would like to continue in the engineering domain. You better take up any courses, uh, uh, not that you know people won't do uh, MBA, but then uh, it would be really apt that all the hard work that you have put in the last uh, four years, uh, will it, it will definitely continue when you take up the similar programs in your post-graduation. Thanks for the call. Well, I really appreciate for time and uh, we wish you good luck for your future. Well, yeah, I was talking about uh, uh, the uh, stress management. A uh, lot of people uh, when I interact with the corporate, uh, you know, I'm sure you will agree to this. Mm, they talk about uh, uh, time, uh, not being able to devote it to their family. In short, I can call it as a work-life balance. Uh, these days, they say that you know they compare it to a microwave oven. A corporate world is like a microwave oven. It's hot basically all the time. Yes. I'm very sure you're also facing this situation. How do you manage this? Well, I've always believed in having a healthy work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, and throughout, um, I have been a very well-planned person in terms of my work and work deliver deliverables. Uh -huh. So I've always believed in prioritizing work, right? So um, I might have 10 tasks in a day. I just see which is the most important. If I don't know it myself, I just go back to the person who has given me this task to understand what is, ne what is the high priority work that needs to be delivered today. So I take up that, complete it. And if there are things which is left pending, I just analyze like how soon it needs to be completed, right? If it's got to do with a client or a customer, I just call them up and I mention clearly the timeline by when it can be done. Mm -hmm. So communication is the crux out here. So you have to communicate to your uh, clients. You have to keep your seniors posted about when you're going to complete it. You have to keep your juniors posted because they can also help uh, pitch in and help you. So that's how you can achieve a good work-life balance. Yeah, everybody does get stressed in the corporate world, but it's, uh, but it's all in you, up to you to manage things in a better way. Right, your managerial skills actually plays a very uh, good role out here. How you can manage multiple tasks at the same time, and how you can convince others to kind of give a better deadline in terms of completion of the work. Right, right? and I'm someone who has always believed in it, and I've always left. I mean, whatever 19 plus of years of experience, I've always left on time. Mm -hmm. Right, I've never kind of extended <laughs> because you okay. know <laughs> I've ensured I've completed things pretty fast, and I had very good grasping powers. Like you know, if uh, somebody tells tells me you have to do a task I kind of analyze okay how how am I supposed to complete it True. so it came naturally to me to kind of multitask and deliver things on time and I've always left on time and fortunately all my seniors were so kind of supportive them they've, they've never questioned like you know Shambhavi why are you leaving on time <laughs> so I've got uh, awesome uh, seniors who have never questioned that because my work uh, spoke for itself True. right because if work is done there's no one to stop you from leaving uh, office on time uh, I remember uh, Narayan Murthy saying this to his employees yes. 
uh, if I see uh, the coffee machine being on at the odd hours in the office, it doesn't mean that you are impressing me with yeah. extra time. They're inefficient. Uh, I feel that you are not able to complete yeah. your work on time. Yes. <laughs> you agree with that? Absolutely. <laughs> that shows inefficiency. They yeah. may they might be taking a lot of breaks during the day and roaming mm. around and then just coming back uh, and starting work around 5 p.m. and showing off to their seniors that they're working late <laughs> hours, which is uh, late hours is an absolute no-no to me because even to my juniors, I keep telling them, leave on time because mm. I'm not going to assess your performance on the number of hours you have spent i'm going to look at the quality of work the that you've delivered quality is very important than quantity absolutely wonderful uh, talking about your professional growth mm -hmm. uh, at a very uh, short time maybe two decades is not uh, definitely a long time in the corporate and you have all almost reached the ceo level now. yes uh, what's the magic <laughs> i don't know magic must be my hard work and dedication mm -hmm. and uh, i was kind of uh, ambitious so I put in my efforts. It's not that it was a bed of roses or a cup of cake to actually, you know, a piece of cake to actually uh, achieve whatever I've done. Great. So because of the efforts and dedication, I think I've achieved whatever I have uh, till date. And um, yeah, there were ups and downs, as I mentioned before, but I faced them boldly and I've become a stronger person to face these challenges in a better way today because of my experience. I And I feel truly blessed that I got uh, opportunity to work in uh, various um, great organizations like HSBC, Beat Barclays. So those organizations gave me an exposure right. to do things in a better way, to be an efficient person, right? And uh, have a clear cut goal in life and to pursue that goal and uh, I have always believed that uh, dreams do come true. So I've always told people like you know do have a goal in life and try to work towards achieving it and it happened with me. Probably when I joined Infosys mm -hmm. um, uh, 19 years ago I had the dream okay uh, eventually I have to reach that topmost level in the organization mm -hmm. and today it has come true. And I'm the best example for all the students today to, you know, just have a goal in life that, so that you can achieve it one day and feel proud about it. Wonderful, yeah. And I'm sure there's another decade and a half to go in your corporate life. Uh, where I do you want so. to see yourself? I hope so. <laughs> Seeing myself um, down the line, um, it's more, I feel I, I should get into more into uh, being a mentor. I'm already one, lot many people call me and ask me for suggestions, mostly the students, uh, my relatives, be it my friends, be it uh, somebody from my network zone who call me up and say like, you know, we want to do this and do you think it's a good idea and I'm always acting like a mentor to them, mm -hmm. right? Because I always believe that uh, if there is some guidance from someone, there's nothing like it. You can actually pursue your goals in a better way, there's clarity of what you want to achieve right. and there's somebody to guide you in a better way to, towards your goals. Monetary growth versus professional growth? For me, it's always been professional growth. I've hmm. never paid attention to monetary growth. I have <laughs> never, I've never even seen my salary slip my okay. entire <laughs> career. Um, I think I've been blessed that I was uh, born in a financially well-off family. Okay. So many are not ba that blessed. So maybe they are focusing so much on salary. But I was never someone who has ever even looked at my salary slip. I don't even know the components of my salary till recently probably. Um, so I've never seen that. I've never even gone and asked my seniors like, you know, you have to increase my pay to a certain extent. Otherwise, I'm going to quit. I've <laughs> never done that because pay has never been a motivator for me. Great. Yeah, it eventually I thought like my work would speak for itself. Absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing like it when you get a good bonus. You you get a good performance rating it all shows that you know you have done well great that is a motivator for me Fantastic. not really in terms of salary salary like i never compare my salary with someone else i go <laughs> around discussing oh you're getting so much i'm getting so much no <laughs> i've never done that ever in my career i would never advise others also to do that because it's a big no to discuss about salary and pay within an organization and if you're caught it's co taken seriously in many organizations i know, I know that for sure <laughs> Well, uh, in the same line, uh, what would you advise is freshers? Because I'm um, uh, very sad to hear that many of them, uh, when they pick up the jobs, uh, the first question they ask the recruiters is that the CTC, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know, you're a fresher. Yes. Uh, your current focus should be on your professional growth and get a good experience and exposure. Yes, Some absolutely. tips on the same line to the freshers who are joining the corporate world? Yes. Um, for freshers, my advice would be um, first and foremost, um, 
focus on your studies if you are in the final year because scores are going to be the important factor for uh, recruiters right like mm. today if i have 10 profiles of freshers i would always go for somebody who's been bright in academics and who's done well for themselves because that's going to show eventually in the corporate life i firmly believe that and 90 percent of the cases i've seen who have been gold medalists they performed well in the corporate life as well okay so that's number one so uh, have that focus and ensure that um, whenever you join an organization be clear about what you want right have a mentor network with as many people as you can because that's going to open up opportunities for you i've seen that it has worked for me networking has always um, you know opened doors for me uh, in terms of opportunities so network with as many people as possible go through the job ads like you know uh, understand what is the skill set that's currently in trend Mm -hmm. Right. So understand that from the job uh, advertisements of various organization. OK, uh, this is in vogue and this is something which I should learn. So pursue those. Right. Take up some short term courses or certification courses to actually move towards, uh, you know, joining a good organization and achieving whatever you have dreamt of in terms of your dream role. Great. Lovely. Uh, Shambhavi, uh, I get frequent questions from uh, especially the the final year graduation students, maybe mm -hmm. uh, BBA or BCom students. Mm -hmm. Uh, who always have this confusion whether I need to get into uh, post graduation program immediately or is it advisable to get into work for a couple of years and then get into post graduation? Any suggestions for such students? BCom, BPM uh, students, I would strongly advise they take up uh, post graduation immediately okay. because uh, it's going to help them in the long run to get are placed in a very good organization okay. because otherwise they are just considered as a graduate and you know in India there's so much of competition there's mm. such huge population there's um, so much of uh, competition across all the organization I know. so it's always good to pursue a post graduation uh, program be it MBA or MCOM and then your resume is going to look impressive for uh, recruiters or organizations to hire you so if you're just graduate it's not going to help to get placed in a good organization so I would strongly advise immediately get into a post graduate program and complete it and then uh, look for corporate opportunities. It's wonderful, wonderful piece of advice. Um, <coughs> the journey in the corporate is always about uh, problem solving or you know how you handle this crisis management situation mm -hmm. and unfortunately uh, the education institutes don't teach students on problem solving and crisis management which is the need of the art today. Yes, absolutely. Um, how have you developed the skills in your journey? And how would you want the freshers to inculcate this uh, on them? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, um, Guru, uh, I've always been a self-motivated person. Okay. So whatever be the level of stress, I've handled it uh, really well uh, in a cool way because uh, at the end of uh, managing things, my dad used to always say, uh, like, for every problem, there is a solution. You, the, the, the whole crux to the story is finding the right solution to that problem. True. So how well you do that, that comes with experience. Right? So you should give yourself time, don't get bogged down or don't get depressed if you don't perform well initial phase of your uh, corporate career. Be bold enough to face any kind of situation and be a stronger person at the end of this kind of uh, stress that you face. And during younger days, you ought to take up stress, I would say, because um, eventually later part of life, you will have a family, then you will have to focus more on them, then manage your work as well. But initial phase, uh, maybe you are not married, you are a uh, single person, then you just go about, you know, taking up that stress and, you know, managing things well, because stress is, at the end of the day, is learning. Right, you learn things when you manage stress, right, and that's always going to be helpful for you in the long run. Great, uh, Shambhavi, you mentioned about uh, the behavioral skills initially, mm -hmm. and in that round, I would like to ask you a specific question related to this people management. Like mm -hmm. when they are put into, uh, let us say, uh, the corporate world, mm -hmm. they will have a lot of colleagues with them. Yes. Uh, so basically, I'm talking about relationship management. Mm -hmm. How do you want these freshers or anyone who getting into the corporate world develop relationship among colleagues? A healthy yes. a one that really motivates them to go ahead. Yes. I would say uh, all the freshers who join an organization, they should immediately connect with the understanding who their colleagues are. Mm -hmm. They are going to be the key factor whether they're going to be successful in career or not uh, because uh, they play a very pivotal role. Uh, you have to be good to all your colleagues because the more you're nice, the more uh, uh, kind of you get it back, they say, right? So they're going to be more helpful if you're nice. And these days, that's always something which works. Earlier days, maybe even in classrooms, uh, teachers or lecturers were kind of strict towards their uh, students. But these days, it won't work. The younger generation, I know. they are uh, technologically more advanced. They have kind of information 
information at a click of a button True. right it's, it's that era right so you have to deal that deal with them in a very nicer way and in in a very diplomatic way i would say build relationship with as many people as you can maybe from different departments the more you connect within an organization different people it's eventually it's going to help you in something or the other i face that i face certain situation where i've got a task which is completely uh, totally unrelated to what i was doing and that's when i just pick up a phone and you know connect with a colleague from some other department and i i ask questions how do i solve this uh, particular problem i don't know about this task and they have always come forward to help me so that's always you know kind of uh, eventually help networking always helps so Great. i've spoken to colleagues across maximum number of people whenever i join an organization and that's what i would advise all the guys who have who are freshers who join an organization try to connect don't be shy don't be hesitant just go talk nobody is going to question you or kind of you know uh, tell you anything for speaking up right questions are always good i know uh, you started as an employee hmm. and maybe a team player yes. and the very short duration you went on to become a team leader yes. you're heading the company now yes uh, any changes on your people management skills how was the transition especially with reference to people management skills people management skills i have been um, somebody who's um, very nice as a boss as well um, sometimes i'm strict because <laughs> if they don't perform well or i know they are caliber if they they are pretty good at their work and sometimes they don't perform well and that's where i pitch in and tell them you're not going as per what's expected so please come back to the line and you know perform well because you have good scope of progress within the organization it's more of playing a mentorship or a guide kind Absolutely. of a role than a boss mm -hmm. so i've always been like that and uh, if there is kind of training issues i try to communicate with them understand how one on ones with them understand what they what is the issue they are facing um try to understand even their personal problems because okay. at times uh, i've gone out of my way and help them resolve that as well right so Wonderful. it's going to help because a person will have both sides to it right they have a professional life a personal life as well so sometimes issues of personal life kind of affect the professional uh, work performance so that's when i've kind of pitched in and understood what's exactly stopping them from from performing well so i connect with my subordinates uh, pretty good and i'm sure whoever is listening today my subordinates they would agree to it i have always been a friendly person to them and i've always connected to them uh, at a personal level but at times i am pretty strict when i have assigned them tasks and they do, don't perform it on time um, yeah i'm strict as well but it's a healthy balance of being strict as well as being friendly <laughs> <laughs> so you're more of a uh, result oriented yes i am <laughs> And I believed in that because <laughs> at the end of the day we are working for a That's company yeah. yeah and uh, our performance is going to affect the company's performance right so right. we have to always see that company is paying us salary so we have to we ought to work for that company in such a way that the company progresses mm -hmm. we shouldn't be just focused on ourselves right? right that's kind of selfish way of thinking <laughs> <laughs> so you should always think like uh, how the company is going to benefit out of whatever i'm doing today absolutely yeah and uh, was the same shambhavi when she was a team player Yes, same. Always, <laughs> always been the same with me. I don't see myself uh, changing over the years. I've mm -hmm. been the same person uh, when I was with in in forces nineteen years ago, and now maybe the confidence level has changed. Mm -hmm. Then I was kind of uh, reserved, but now I'm more confident to face situations, face challenges that comes my way in the corporate life. But yeah, in terms of my uh, work, the way I handle tasks, way I handle people, it's pretty much the same throughout. Hello. Uh, every corporate today makes a statement uh, this is the best place for you to excel mm -hmm. uh, it's a home away from home mm -hmm. how shambhavi has uh, created this environment uh, in the office place uh, as i mentioned i've always been friendly to all my staff and uh, i've ensured that they're happy at the end of the day because happiness matters to me um, even when i was a team player i've ensured that i connect with people understand their problems and find solutions for them mm -hmm. right and even now as a boss i ensure that people are happy working within the organization and that's why i kind of keep connecting with them on one on one basis understand their issues try to solve them and provide the right guidance for them to overcome any kind of challenges and that's obviously it happens with experience as i mentioned before and people more they get experience they will automatically face these challenges in a very True. easy way but yeah it takes time i know uh shambhu if you compare it to the or benchmark the global standards mm -hmm. uh, the attrition rate in indian corporate sector is very very high very high um uh, can you point this reason because you are also heading a company yes. uh from uh, two views you know one from the employees point of view and the corporate point of view 
something on attrition yeah from employee point of view i've already mentioned that uh, people are looking for a higher pay and that's when they jump they never see the kind of learning they will get within an organization if they stick around okay. right and whenever a person quits within our organization i have a talk with them i tell them do not quit at such a early stage give us some time we are going to improve the situation if there is something bothering from our end mm -hmm. we can try to fix that issue be it in terms of salary be it in terms of working environment be it any other issue we try to understand the issue and give a proper solution mm -hmm. because we do not want people to quit our organization right okay. um so i try as much as possible to understand things but at the end of the day uh, if they have decided to quit there is nothing stopping them so they move on so mostly they are youngsters they are looking for a better pay structure and multiple other things um, so i try to understand that more and more and that's when you know i don't want to come to a stage where you know they have reached a stage when they have decided to quit prior hand itself i try to understand if there yes. are anyone is facing problems that's why i have constant uh, talks with them understand if they are facing any issues whether they're going to stick around if not what is the reason for not sticking around with our organization what what we could do as an organization uh, in a better way to actually uh, make them feel better right so i've always uh, felt like you know our the company that i'm working for it's a team of like 60 people and we are like a close knit family but still there are people quitting uh, we can't do much about it um that's okay uh, if they have decided to personally move to a different professional um, you know organization it's okay but then uh, if there is something which we could fix i would definitely like to uh, retain them as much as i can <laughs> wonderful uh, i always seen uh, at one point of time when they get enough exposure of let us say uh, 15 years 20 years mm -hmm. they change the profession itself mm -hmm. like they get into consulting yes they may get into teaching, teaching. <laughs> <laughs> right teaching is probably I don't know. I accept it because uh, today uh, teachers need uh, corporate experiences, yes. and that can be uh, wonderful to the students when yes. they have uh, a corporate guy standing in front of them. True. But how uh, uh, you know uh, fair it is uh, to change this profession at that juncture? You know, at about twenty twenty five years, you can still give best to the industry. No, I would say it's okay. Uh, Any thoughts of you getting into academics? Yes, I'm pursuing <laughs> my B. A. right now. <laughs> I'm in the second year, so that's a very apt question to you. Uh, yeah, that's right. Because I thought I should get into teaching and share my corporate experience with the uh, new generation, mm -hmm. and that way, they, if you, even one person benefits out of it, nothing like it. I would say uh, <laughs> I'm successful out there. Um, the reason um, I went around uh, there was a time where I decided to give up on corporate life, but then um, some offer came up, and then I decided, okay, let me pursue uh, my corporate journey for a bit more. and uh, maybe that's because uh, they wanted me around to actually you know streamline the process or to bring the company to a better stature than what it was then mm -hmm. so i accepted that offer and uh, pursued my cor corporate career but uh, teaching is something which i would definitely like to explore not now maybe 5 uh, 10 years down the line <laughs> oh lovely <laughs> that's wonderful uh, you made a statement that uh, you felt that you want to uh, you had that intention of you know that as enough i mean i have to quit I uh, wanted to ask this question actually at any point of time you felt like okay, it's done uh, I need to many take a break times, right now many times. how have you handled that situation that point of time many times i have decided i'll <laughs> give up on the corporate life and you know get into something else uh -huh. uh, but then uh, i don't know why maybe i was destined to be in the corporate world and uh, that's why i've pursued my corporate journey further 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 and i've reached a stage where i'm 19 plus and still in the corporate world Uh, okay. but many times i felt like because uh, maybe i wanted to focus more on my personal life i have a kid who's 8 year old i have a 8 year old daughter so i thought maybe i should focus more on her um and spend more quality time with her but it never happened but i'm somehow managing it now um where in i've got a flexi shift in the current organization that i'm working for and i'm getting more time to devote towards her so i'm happy about it so if a corporate um, you know or a organization believes in giving women that flexi shift Great. nothing like it because then they can pursue their personal ambitions as well as you know professional ambitions in a very good way wonderful uh the freshers these days you know develop their own uh, uh, rather i would say they have their own passion towards or hobbies towards maybe sports mm -hmm. they tend to lose all these they when they get into uh, corporate they say yes. i do not have any time to this mm -hmm. well i say they have to balance everything they should yeah you know you had any kind of hobbies and passions where you skipped because of your corporate uh, pressures 
<laughs> well, uh, not really. Uh, luckily for me, I was uh, more interested in event management. Okay. So I love conducting fun activities and all that. Uh -huh. So every organization that I've uh, worked for so far, starting from Infosys till date, I have always got into you know kind of conducting events for employees and uh, giving them break from the monotonous uh, work and uh, you know helping them have have some fun in the corporate uh, journey. And uh, that's I'm passionate about conducting fun activities and uh, event management. Management. So that's my hobby, but nothing apart from that. But these days, there are so many platforms for kids. I mean, if, if, if they want to pursue, say, dancing, there are so many platforms where they can perform and, you know, uh, make it a career, be it singing, be it uh, drawing. There are so many platforms these days which we never had, right? So, and even parents are encouraging these days, which is a okay. good thing. Right. Um, yeah. You would suggest them to continue, I mean, not to stop this till the yes, end. Yes, they should not. Right. They should. They should continue. Right. They should follow what uh, they are passionate about because right. that's eventually go going to convert into success. Absolutely. Yeah. Solid. All the discussion finally, uh, Shambhavi, pens down to the, uh, the education institute. I mean, I think uh, uh, you have answered enough today that uh, education institute have a bigger role to play yes. in getting the kids corporate ready. Yes. some few suggestions to the uh, to the educational institutes yes uh, try to understand i would say all the educational institutes should understand what's the recent requirement by the corporates uh, That's excellent right point. yeah Absolutely. so try to understand try to connect with industry professionals what are your requirements mm -hmm. today or uh, tomorrow our students are going to pass out from our institute and tomorrow they might join your organization what is the key thing that you are looking for so try to connect with many industry professionals understand what is in vogue these days and um, help the students to actually pursue a more practical kind of have that practical exposure than just theoretical knowledge. Right. Marks are important. I'm not saying they're not important because I want every kids to study well and score well. But at the same time, focus on other things as well. Uh, develop your personality. Uh, um, be prepared to face the corporate journey in a better way by understanding things and uh, communicating with your professors and other corporate professionals. Wonderful. Uh, I think uh, we had a wonderful discussion, students. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, students from second PU and uh, you know uh, from the graduation uh, courses have watched this program. Uh, I would also say there are a lot of parents who are watching this uh, particular program. Any uh, any tips or suggestions? You are a wonderful mother as well. <laughs> Thank uh, any you. tips to uh, the parents? Yeah, parents, I think you should understand your kids well um, because more you understand what they are uh, looking for, then you can, you can be more supportive in their journey uh, towards achieving things in life. Great. If they're passionate about something, be, be more supportive. Do not say Absolutely. like, you know, uh, you should get into engineering or medical mm -hmm. itself. Never and say that's that. That's the whole reason why I asked you this question yes. because they play a very important role Absolutely. in the student's true, journey. True, true. Very true. Right. My parents were very supportive mm. when I decided I don't want to pursue engineering, I want to do BBM. They were said, okay, go ahead and do it. <laughs> and that's when I kind of achieved in that journey. Lovely. I got a rank, I stood, uh, got, uh, stood first in MBA as well. So it helped me because I was passionate about something and they supported me in that journey. <coughs> right? So it's always going to be good if you kind of support your kids in what they are interested in rather than your vision, right? Help them achieve what they um, are uh, trying to vision uh, for themselves. Wonderful. Uh, yes, I think uh, it's time for wrap up and uh, we had a fantastic discussion, a lot of eye openers from both, you know, uh, from all the players, be it academic institutes, uh, be it uh, corporate or be it the employees who join them. I think uh, the discussion was very, very fruitful today. On behalf of uh, all my students and viewers, let me extend a heartful thanks to Shambhavi. Thanks for taking your time and uh, joining with us. Thank you so much. Uh, for thanks all the viewers once again for joining us. Uh, Margadarshi, the Edu Series program, uh, is a uh, program organized by Trisha Classes in association with Daiju World. A uh, lot of episodes on the way. Keep watching this space. Thank you. <laughs>